Hello, Blue Group. I can't tell you how many times I've re-recorded this video. It's starting to get crazy. So we're just going to do it in this last take. I'm going to cover my LO on the urea cycle, okay? The urea cycle, to contextualize, is necessary because we have protein catabolism happening all over the body, natural degradation. It's producing these amino groups, this free-floating ammonia, which is toxic to the body especially the central nervous system. And so we need to find a way to, number one, transport this amino group to the liver, and then to get it from the liver safely to the kidneys for excretion. Now, first off, we ha is, is transporting it from the body to the liver. So if it's coming from the muscles, it actually goes safely travels through the blood in the form of alanine and then ends up just staying in the liver cytosol. Okay, so here's our cytosol. If it comes from other tissues, such as the brain, then it goes in the form of glutamine and ends up staying in the, or goes to the mitochondria. Now, once alanine and glutamine get into the liver and the liver's mitochondria, they're both converted through amino transferases into glutamate. Okay? Now, this is really important. The liver only wants to deal with glutamate and these two different glutamates are going to be handled differently. Actually, the one in the cytosol is then transferred to aspartate, and the one in the mitochondria, um, just for space, I'm going to draw it out here, is transferred into or converted into free floating ammonia. Okay? This is important as you will see when we look closely at the. Now, I've pre drawn the urea cycle here just so that we don't have to waste time drawing everything. But I'm just going to point out a few things. So here is our free floating. Let me get a different color. Here is our free floating ammonia group, which was um, cleaved from glutamate, which was provided from glutamine. Now this ammonia group is going to attach to CO2. Now just as a side note, remember that we're in the mitochondria, which is undergoing cellular respiration, producing a bunch of CO2. So there's abundance of CO2. This is then combined to form carbamoyl phosphate by an enzyme called carbamoyl phosphate synthase. Now I won't talk about every enzyme. In fact, I won't even go through the entire urea cycle with you. I don't think that's going to be very productive. I'm just going to point out one other thing. Check out our aspartate, which was produced from an amino transferase reaction um, from the glutamate that came from alanine. Now this aspartate is going to donate our second NH4 amino group to urea. Remember that the urea looks like this. Okay, so it has two amino groups on it. First one coming in the mitochondria, second one coming in the cytosol. Now, as we go through, the only other thing I want to point out we're producing fumarate right here, which is a connection with the Krebs cycle. And there's a lot of interplay between the urea cycle and the Krebs cycle, um, which is explained a little bit more in our LO, but I didn't touch on a ton. And then finally, we end up producing urea, which then goes through the kidneys and is excreted safely. Made with DoodleCast Pro.